So you talked about some of the response from the activist community toward you on social media. I just wanted to read something that I saw on the Force IMDb page. Um, and a woman had reviewed the film and she said, while I do believe that Nix allows the OPD to display their good side, he did not let them hide their dirt either. When emotions run high, it's difficult to stand back and show both sides fairly, but I think he did just that. Mm -hmm. You know, that was our intent and I think to, you know, some people cannot, uh, it's, 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 it's remarkable because the film is a really devastating indictment of this department and of the sort of what's broken within the institution, the moral failure that ultimately occurred at this department. And I, and I told them going in, I said, you know, um, I'm going to be fair to you, but I'm also going to tell the story that I see, that I experience, that I, that I witness. And, you know, humanizing someone doesn't mean necessarily making them look good. It means revealing them in their full three dimensions, and that's what we do. Like you know, that's our that's the whole value proposition of of openhood is to sort of get to that authenticity through visceral observational storytelling. And um, but the funny thing is, like you know, we've screened this thing to lots of audiences and different types of people, and some people still take issue with with um, still perceive the film as a pro cop film. And that's because the anger and the distrust and, and the, the pain that people are carrying is so deep that any step toward um, showing a cop in a, in a positive light is, is seen as, as um, some, some degree or some, some shade of, of propaganda. And you know, there, there, there is a spectrum of sort of resistance to, to the police in this country that ranges from um, the sort of all lives matter pro-cop people to abolitionists who believe that we should remove all police from our communities and replace it with a completely new paradigm and model for community and public safety. And so I think woven through that is some, some degree of performance that bubbles up and, and it's very difficult sometimes to um, and like, like in other words, no moderation. It's, it's whose side are you on? Define your values, articulate those values without compromise. And I think when when you know you have a balanced, a fair, a fair and balanced approach, that is perceived as a compromise by by many. And so we've had to we've had to respond to that, and that has come out in 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 some of the reviews of the film. Not many. Many of the reviews reflect the comment that you've just read there, but there have been some that have been more critical um, of the balanced approach. Like, this doesn't require a balanced approach. This requires incisive, um, you know, um, an, an incisive takedown. And so that's something that, it's just a reality. It's just a reality right now in our sort of public consciousness around this issue. I think the beginning of the film is much different from the middle of the film and toward the end when, for me, I was, yeah, it felt like a punch in the gut. So I, I, yeah. I saw it going one way and I, I was drawn in, but I, for me, mm -hmm. and this is just my experience, yeah. didn't, didn't see it in that way. Um, knowing that you started out with one intention for the film and then things changed and mm -hmm. without, I guess, giving away too much, right. how was that? Because it was a drastic turn of events. <laughs> Well, narratively, it was an incredibly challenging film to put together in the edit, in the edit room. And we had many, many, many meetings. And our, our model is an interesting sort of model. Like, I'm the director. I also shoot. And then I have a producer, Linda Davis. And then I have a, my editor also does sound. So Lawrence LaRue is the... And he's also a producer. And so that's our team, primarily. And then John Els, who's the executive producer, he also did, did some shooting and... And, and John's a sort of legendary documentary f photographer and, and, and director. And, um, and then we had you know, Sean Havey, who's our associate producer, and he's kind of a jack-of-all-trades, kind of fixer, um, problem solver. So it was a very small team, and we made the film sort of like, um, we shot the film consecutive with editing the film. So we were shooting, we'd shoot. If we had a day down shooting, we'd start putting stuff together. And as we went, everything was starting to change in the country. Black Lives Matter was emerging. It was becoming much more difficult for us to imagine a film coming out that was sympathetic 
toward the police, not that that was our intent, but what we were observing early on was a lot of success at that department. A lot of the reforms were working, they were making progress, it was a, uh, the department was a model for reform, and in our minds we were thinking, <laughs> how, how is this film going to sit, in, uh, when at the same time this is what we're seeing, we're seeing all these incidences on our Facebook feeds, Eric Gardner and, and, and Tamir Rice, you know, Mike Brown, like all these things were happening one after the other after the other. And it, it, we were really worried, actually, like, like that we were going to uh, appear to be tone deaf. And so we constantly were asking ourselves, what are we doing? How are we framing the story? You know, um, it was a lot of, we cut a lot of versions of this film. At one point I tried narrating the film myself from the perspective of a black person who's trying to make a film that impacts the African-American community. And, and um, in, the, in the end, we decided on the approach that we did, which was a two-year uh, you know, window into a department attempting to reform at this moment in time, which was a, a seminal moment in the, in, the, in the history of policing, but also one of, probably the most dramatic moment in the history of the OPD. Like, no, no question about that. And, um, and the, the film is a result of that framing. And, you know, this is a two-year journey um, and it, it involves lots of twists and turns. The, the last, which is particularly dramatic and did feel like a punch in the gut to us as well because it, it just came out, of, it came out of nowhere. It came out of nowhere. And so that's how, we, that's how we rendered it in the film. It's a sharp turn in the film. And, but that's exactly how, how we experienced it. I thought it was effective too how you had the headlines of these various publications about the different turns and mm -hmm. I, th I thought that was um, just a way to sort of just let it be and, and show it without any, I mean, these were real headlines that I just thought that was very effective. Yeah, and we really, we, we made that choice because we didn't want to try to interpret and editorialize what was happening, but there was a whole group of in, uh, journalists and investigative reporters who were tracking this thing and trying to make sense of it. And so that, that was how the public was experiencing it, that's how we were experiencing it, and we wanted to sort of allow, it also allowed us to add a little bit of context to, to the material to sort of ground the audience uh, a little bit better.